Welcome to the Stroke Busters podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinn, and I'm thrilled to take you on a journey into the fascinating world of stroke research and innovation. Join us as we delve into the latest breakthroughs and insights from the Institute for Stroke and Cerebrovascular Diseases at UT Health Houston. Each episode will bring you captivating conversations with top physicians, researchers, and courageous survivors. So get ready to expand your knowledge and be inspired by the incredible work being done in the world of stroke care. In today's episode, we have the privilege of introducing an inspiring young woman whose journey of resilience following a stroke is nothing short of remarkable. Our guest, Katie, at the tender age of 27, experienced a stroke turning her world upside down. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, which left her isolated in the hospital without the support of her loved ones, her spirit and positive outlook helped her persevere. And you'll discover her road of recovery led her to the Institute for Stroke and Cerebrovascular Diseases here at UT Health Houston, where she participated in one of our research studies. So join us as we delve into Katie's inspiring story and hear how her journey serves as a beacon of hope for the stroke community, reminding us that with determination and the right support, progress can be remarkable and possible. Let's get right to it. Katie, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Stroke Busters. You are coming to us all the way from Seattle. Welcome. Thanks. We are reaching out to stroke survivors, letting them know the resources that are available to them to help improve their quality of life, as well as help us gain knowledge and uh, information uh, to move forward in stroke uh, research. So if you want to just let us know briefly your story. So you were a young stroke survivor. Uh, tell, Tell us a little bit about that. Where were you in kind of your life stage during that time? Yeah, so I worked uh, before. Um, I um, have um, DocuSign, so sales. Um, And yeah, um, like. So you were just a young professional starting out your career, living life, and then the stroke hit you. What were the challenges that you faced following uh, your stroke? Yeah, so everything. (laughs) Um, So I, well, okay, so um, COVID times. Oh, oh, of course. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And me and only me, like um, um, nurse and doctor, yes, but not... um, boyfriend or mom and dad like no so COVID yeah I can imagine that's already a scary time and then you need medical assistance and people around you to support you and the world is crumbling (laughs) exactly exactly protocols in place yeah yeah and for me like before stroke like I'm healthy like really healthy zero broke um like hand feet like no broken everything um no er like zero Mm -hmm. and the like um aphasia is difficult so Mm -hmm. actually like good like um like mind like racing but not like no like like so like actually good um yeah that's interesting so that's gotta be really tough yeah yeah Yeah. I mean just to put it in simple terms it's tough it's tough yeah you know well and like for me um like public speaking before stroke is easy for me, but after really hard. Oh, I bet. Do you yeah. plan on doing any, you know, speaking, you know, at, at events or conferences or for, you know, stroke support groups? Yeah, like I want to, yeah. Oh, that's great. 
So Katie, you were involved in the super program here at the Stroke Institute, uh, which kind of stands for Intensive Upper Extremity Recovery Program for Chronic Strokes. So this involved dedicating six hours a day, five days a week for multiple weeks uh, to see if this program could improve your quality of life. Tell us about how you found out about this study and then what it took to travel from Seattle to Houston to come down. Yeah, so um, Brett, so boyfriend, Brett, um, research um, like aphasia or um, like arm and leg. So arm and leg, um, um, Houston, um, and um, I love to travel, so, like, and hard um, work, but good, um, because intensive, I like intensive, not, like, one hour a day, like, okay, fine, Mm -hmm. but intensive is really good. Fantastic, so this was just the program for you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like it was tailor-made. Yep. Okay, so share with us a little bit about your experience. So what what were you doing for six hours a day? Yeah, so um, arm and leg um, and um, like spelling, um, like uh, right side. So I... um, right side like weak like really weak um and um so like teaching right side to work Mm -hmm. Um, what are some memorable moments uh or achievements that stick out to you during your time uh with the super program yeah so super program um like um it's really good um I get progress I get progressed um and um like I am doing it like hard um all the things like uh arm leg and aphasia really difficult Mm -hmm. but am doing it. Fantastic. So you would say that being involved in a program like this and continuing uh, your therapy has made a difference in your quality of life. Yes, exactly. And what advice would you give to uh, stroke survivors when they are perhaps hesitant or nervous about uh, joining a study or a program like this? Yeah, so I am nervous before because, like, stroke, like, I don't know, traveling, um, like, or, like, Houston, but, like, driving Mm -hmm. um, or, like, passengers. um, Oh, my gosh, it's hard, like, like, um, home and that's it, like, not anything else. But, no, like, I... um, really good um teacher um emily so ot um emily is really good um how long until you started to see some improvement from the study yeah so um so dad went to texas and um dad um, recognize like three days <laughs> like oh well me I don't know for <laughs> me like because I am a plus so like oh I don't know I don't know but after <clears throat> the intensive of the uh, intensive um, arm and leg um Oh, actually, yes, I recognize it. 
So you describe yourself as like an, an A student. So you're like a type A, you know, you, yeah. you're you're ready to go. So you're you are the perfect <laughs> candidate for this in just this in, in intensive uh recovery model worked for you. People around you saw improvement and then you started seeing improvement. Uh, have you been involved in any other rehab activities uh, since the study to kind of keep up with this progress? Yeah, so um, like pushing boundaries. So um, Renman, so Seattle, really good pushing boundaries and I like it. And um, for me, two hours a day um so um that's really good pushing myself um so pushing boundaries is a nonprofit in the washington area it's exercise therapy and community resources and exactly. so how you mentioned your boyfriend brett so how yeah. is your relationship with him and, and other people in your support system uh, played a role in your recovery journey? I mean, obviously, a huge role. He's the one who found the super program down in Houston. Uh, but what advice could you give to other stroke survivors and caregivers based on your experience? Yeah, so um, Brett is really good. Um, like, for me, A+. plus. So, like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. But Brett, no, slowly down um, mm -hmm. and like quiet and one second. And like, I recognize it. Like I am good for Brett. Like, yes, I, I do think so. And mom and dad um, and Nina. So Nina is my sister. Um, and really good, um, like, talking and listening. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's encouraging to hear your story. And I'm sure we hope that it's a motivation for other patients, no matter where they are, to, you know, do the research or have their family advocate for them. And Katie, you are on Instagram at Katie underscore stronger underscore than underscore stroke. And <laughs> yeah, and so here's where you're just kind of documenting your progress and connecting with other stroke survivors. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, Katie, we are for sure going to continue following you on your journey. And we hope to follow up again sometime and see the progress that you've made. It's obvious you've made a, a lot of progress. You're very positive, uh, warm personality. And uh, I thank you again for your time. Thank you. And that concludes another insightful episode of Stroke Busters. Please note that the ideas and opinions shared in this podcast are our own and should not be taken as a substitute for expert medical advice. Always consult your healthcare provider before initiating any program or therapy to ensure you receive personalized and optimal care tailored to your specific needs. And if you found today's episode informative and want to stay updated on all things Stroke Busters, don't forget to connect with us on social media. We are on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, X, and YouTube, and you'll receive the latest updates on upcoming episodes and can share our content with your colleagues, friends, and family to spread stroke awareness. For the latest news, updates, and information about the Stroke Institute, including research, programs, events, and more, visit us online at uth.edu forward slash stroke hyphen institute. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your preferred platform. Hit that follow button to ensure you never miss an episode. We have exciting discussions planned for you. So stay informed, stay curious, and stay engaged. Thank you for being an integral part of the Stroke Busters community. Until next time, take care. <laughs>